Hello and welcome to Let's Play Hard Nova. My name is Big Los and I will be doing a full narration and commentary for this game. This is my first Let's Play and first video ever. I decided to do a Let's Play for this game because there are no videos at all on YouTube for it and I feel it deserves a full Let's Play. If you're watching this, you must know something of the game already since it's not real well known, hence the lack of videos and material about it on the net. Basically, this game is a space RPG and you play mercenary. The object of the game is to complete missions given to you that advance the story's plot. And you are given freedom to explore four solar systems and their worlds. So let's go to the main title screen. Get used to this music because you're going to hear it a lot. When the game starts, when you go to the menu screen, and when you travel through a wormhole. As you can see, this game was programmed by Carl Buter, and this is his second game, I believe. The first being Sentinel Worlds 1 Future Magic. This game is in many ways a successor to that one, with similar gameplay, although this one has better graphics and is rife with dark humor. And if you're interested in Sentinel Worlds 1 Future Magic, uh, Amethyst Lunatary is currently doing an LP of that game, and I'll post this video as a response to the first video she did. So the next screen is the copy protection. And to get past the copy protection, a poster came with the original box of this game. However, I don't have it, and if you download this game from Abandonware like I did, all you have to do is press enter because somebody cracked the copy protection. Thank you very much. Okay, when you start the game, you have a choice of two characters, Nova or Stark. The only difference between the two are types of dialogue from certain characters and certain skills. So Nova will start with two points of agility and five points of stealth, while Stark will have four agility and two stealth. Nova will begin with six points in star common programming, while Stark starts with six points in ship evasion. Nova's tactics, close combat, and firearms will all be two, while Stark's will be three. On this basis, I'm going to choose Stark because of his higher numbers and key abilities in the beginning aspect of the game. I will discuss the abilities in some detail once the game starts, and I start leveling up my characters, so... Stark. And... Let's play... Elsewhere in the galaxy, beyond the frontier of the core worlds, an ancient sun is dying. The Teru Supreme of the planet Typhon casts up an Illum Orb, one final attempt to heal the sun god Ta before the fading Nova dims forever. Ta does not brighten. The Teru Supreme knows they will all die unless they find a new home. Maybe there is a suitable world beyond the tunnel in space. He hopes it is uninhabited because if it is not, the Typhon battle fleet stands ready. You stand in the entrance level of Mastas Base. To the north is your hover ship. To the south is an armed supply store, a Robo Maze combat simulator, and the Malibu Bar and Casino. And you press A to go on. Okay, so these are your characters. You're Stark, and this is Acri Janner, your navigator. And you have two buttons next to each character. The first one, when they turn white, like it is now, that means you have skill points to assign. In other words, you've leveled up. The bottom one, when it turns red, means you're out of ammunition. So, let's go to the abilities and assign abilities. Okay, so like I said, Stark has four agility. Agility means your ability to shoot faster. Because after you shoot, there's kind of like a recharge time. So the higher agility, the less time there's going to be between the times you can shoot. Now, stealth, that is for certain other types of characters, like dark haters and uh, a robot that you're going to get later. Where you can use this command over here, and use the function keys, shortcuts, 
so you can break off from the party and explore further away from the party and hopefully not get attacked. So the higher skill you have in stealth, the less likely you you will be attacked. Fitness, the higher level of fitness you have, the more hit points you're going to gain per level. So that's pretty important. But aptitude is the most important ability that you're going to want to max out. And these max out at 20. Almost all of them. Now the higher points you have in aptitude, the more points you're going to get when you level up to assign to other skills. And when you max it out at 20, you will have 7 points to assign to all other skills. So we're going to want to level this one up pretty quick. Tactics. Tactics uh, for every even number you have in tactics, it will bump up your other three following abilities, close combat firearms and special weapons, by 5%. That's to hit. Now, close combat has to do with melee weapons, so you have to be right next to the enemy or one square away from the enemy to hit with close combat melee weapons. Firearms, you could be farther away, you just need line of sight. That's going to be the main one we're going to be using. Later in the game, we're going to be using special weapons like blasters and uh, we're going to get a thermocaster. That's the best weapon in the game. Demolitions, that's for grenades and I don't know how to use the grenades. I've tried everything and it doesn't work. Ship evasion, that's pretty important because when you're flying around in space and you're flying around next to another ship, the higher evasion you have, the less likely you are to collide with that ship and cause damage to your ship. It, also, the same with the missiles that get shot at you. The higher the evasion, the less likely they will hit you when they're next to you. Starcom, that determines how fast you decode messages. Programming determines uh, your level of skill to hack into your computer to improve certain aspects of the ship. Like avionics, the, the higher uh, level of avionics you have on your ship, the easier it's going to turn. And for thrusters, the higher you have level in thrusters, the the faster you're going to accelerate and decelerate. Mechanics and electronics are for your engineer. And we don't have an engineer yet, but we're going to get one. And the higher uh, numbers you have in these skills, the, the faster they're going to repair your ship when it gets damaged. And Star Gunner, that's when you're shooting other ships in space. The higher number that is, the more damage you do per shot. And the same with Hover Gunner, when you're flying the hover ship about, that determines how much damage you do per shot. And that's not really so important because basically when you're flying around the planet, you want to get to point from point A to point B as fast as you can without messing around shooting other hover ships. So, like I said, aptitude is the best one for right now that we're going to level up. So I'm going to put most of the points into that one. So next time I level up, I'm going to have more points and so on and so on until I max it out. So let's in increase this to... Eight, and then I'm going to put another one into firearms. Okay, and Acre Janner is a Bremar or Bremer. I'm just going to say Bremer. It's easier. Uh, these, this race of aliens are your principal navigators in the game. So, extremely important. As soon as you can, get your navigator off the ground squad because once your navigator is killed, you can't 
get another one basically and then you won't be able to fly between solar systems so the navigator has a special ability that uh, Stark didn't have called navigation song and the maximum amount for that one is 50 all the others are 20 and the higher you have in this one the less fuel you use when you go between solar systems so that's pretty important because fuel can get expensive but like I said aptitude for right now is the best one and we only have one point for some reason so we're gonna give that point to aptitude so next time uh, Acre Jenner gets a level he'll get more points and I think it's a he. Actually, I think they're hermaphrodites. And if you press F9, it brings up the info screen. And you can learn about the different uh, races. And I'm going to bring up... Uh, if you press M, you bring up the, the, the race of Bremers. And if you're interested in, in reading this, you could just pause the video and read it. But I'm not going to read it. You know, I'm just going to kind of glance over it and then just go back so and this is the store right here and it's an arm store and unfortunately they don't they don't tell you what the damages of the different weapons but the good part is you can buy a weapon and then sell it back for the same price that you bought it for so you're really not losing out on anything but I'm not gonna buy anything for right now I'm gonna go to the bar and it's got some funky 80's cyberpunk music going on and that's the Zero L Mercenaries. They have kind of a strange history, and I'll bring up the uh, the thing about Zero Ls if you want to read about them. Basically, the all the mercenaries. There's three groups of mercenaries in the game. They all shared the same planet, and the the Delta Coros and the Star Killers and your Star Killer teamed up against the Zero Ls and basically there was a war and uh, some nuclear weapons went off and they were blinded basically so they walk around with these flashlights because they can't really see too good so yeah, it's kinda strange I know whatever and it looks like we're getting kind of up there with the time so I'm going to stop the video for right now and I will see you in part two thanks for watching